Reflecting, reflecting, reasoning, reckoning. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Buy all your office supplies and stationery online now. We have this evening JC Pagani. Hello, JC. Hi, Larry. And uh, we've got Cameron Slater, editor of The Truth and uh, whaleall.co.nz. G'day, Cam. G'day, Larry. JC, to you first. Uh, how do you see Brendan Horan, New Zealand First uh, MP's position? Uh, right now, when his brother is more or less saying that, um, well, he's he, he's accusing him of withdrawing eighty five thousand dollars from his dying mother's bank account. Well, he's entitled to be assumed innocent till proven guilty, isn't he? And he's he's um, saying that he's completely innocent of any wrongdoing. So we have to have to give him his fair um, due there, but. Um, look, it's either a, a, a horrible family feud. I think the mother won lotto, didn't she, in Australia? She won a million dollars. and Or it's um, he, he is guilty. But I noticed that the only politician so far who's even hinted at going near this, because they're all backing away until they know what, what the hell's going on, is John Banks. Well, having John Banks complain about unexplained mm. flows of money is like having Berlusconi... Right, and I, and I think Mr. I think Mr. Banks should just stay well clear of this. Look, uh, Cameron, there's, there's nothing proven. There's no proof. We've got some allegations here, right? Yeah, and Winston never got any donations from Owen Glenn either. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you know, I just think John Banks, of all people, should stay away oh, from this. Oh, you just love bashing John Banks. Look, the bottom line is, is you've got New Zealand first, they learnt on the master's knee on how to obfuscate and how to dance on the head of a pin. And there's probably more to come on this, I would suggest. Uh, certainly from a couple of people that I've to, talked to today, there's a lot more to this, and that New Zealand First has known about it for months and months and months. So what we'll get now is we'll get Winston denying all knowledge of, of any sorts of, um, of, of notification, throwing some board member under a bus, and then professing that they didn't inform of anything. And if you believe that Winston Peters doesn't know everything that goes on within New Zealand first, then I've got a bridge I can study. Well, what we know here, Josie, is that it is that there is legs to this in the form that the brother is saying that he's going to lay a complaint with the police. Yeah. That's right, and there may well be, but the point is we don't know yet, no, and, we and until we know for sure. And also, you know, look, I'm not going to be an apologist for Winston Peters, but, mm. I mean, you know, he, he's come out and said, show me the facts. Once I've got the bank statements and I know what I'm dealing with, then I'll act. Oh, come on, and I think, and that's fair enough. But also, you have to ask. I mean, can you say you know about you know about this? Well, where is there a political motivation right now to smear Winston once again no, with a, with a dodgy I've, story that might be nothing no, to do people, with him? The people I've been talking to today uh, are not political in any way. Um, a couple of journalists. Um, you know, um, other sources around the um, Tauranga area, but none of them are politicians. This is not a smear against Winston. Winston smears himself just by opening his mouth, and so that, that we don't need to worry about him. We know that everything that he says, what it appears. All right. Uh, we'll come back in just a moment. Cameron Slater, Jesse Pagani on the huddle. It's now 15 to 6. Larry Williams Drive. With the business banking specialists at West. Twelve to six. Back with uh, Josie Pagani and uh, Cameron Slater. Josie, let's a uh, couple of quick issues. Jetstar. Um, yeah. What is it about Jetstar? Uh, they keep cancelling flights or rescheduling or whatever, or they have other uh, mess ups. You, you book, you, you can't be sure that you're going to fly. What do you see? Oh, look, I heard the commentator you interviewed beforehand saying that they're a low-cost airline and they do that by cutting out the frills. Well, they've taken it to a whole new level. They cut out the actual flight. Uh, this is the problem. If you're, if you're silly enough, like I've been in the past, to buy Jetstar, well, maybe you've only got yourself to blame. There's a, there's a great website called uh, don'tflyjetstar.com. There's a Facebook page called We All Have At Least One Bad Jetstar Story. One. I, I almost wonder if it's a <laughs> PR strategy. This well, yeah. Uh, ca bad. Cameron, they're just making a mess of this airline. I don't know why anyone uh, flies Jetstar. And if you've got, you know, let's say your family member said, oh, let's, you know, We'll fly you in for Christmas. We're going to book you on Jetsco. You'd think you that they actually hated you and didn't want you to turn up. See, I've got a theory, Cam. I reckon the Taliban or Al Qaeda are actually actually own Jetstar and they're running it. And this is like you know hijacking a plane is so yesterday. They're actually hijacking the whole industry and bringing it to its knees by running them like blooming Jetstar. Well, you know, you look at the Urban Dictionary and what they call Jetstar. They've replaced the first three letters with a four-letter word that starts with S. 
Uh, Cameron, a, a political marketing expert, this is uh, Claire Robinson from Massey University. She says four of the country's biggest newspapers were substantially biased in their coverage of last year's election, mostly in favour of John Key. Unfortunately, we haven't got too long on this. Well, what do you see? She, I think she's reading different papers to what I was reading. If you have a look at the coverage, particularly the over-egging of the teapot tapes by the media, um, it, it's just ridiculous. And, and then when you look at... Uh, just the bare facts. I mean, we had the Rena thing just before the election where Phil Goff was in his shiny shoes digging up globs of oil for five minutes in his suit. Look, his staff are responsible for the poor photo um, opportunities that existed. Not anyone else, not actually, the Herald, not the what? editors. I, mean, I actually he was agree, goober. Pam. Yeah. I actually agree with that. I, I was a press sec, and look, it's, it's our job to make sure that these bad photos don't happen. I once almost knocked over a journalist to stop him taking a photo of the Minister of Corrections locked in a new prison cell <laughs> awesome. with his hands on the bars. Well, remember, these are images, they're photos, they're not the words, they're graphics, captions, that's right. bold headlines. Then this is the photos, that's right. But the other yeah. thing, Larry, is that, look, when you're behind, you get worse coverage. It's just one of those things, because the reporters are trying to explain why you're behind. And when you're ahead, they'll highlight the positives to explain why you're doing well. So you solve the problem by being ahead. Thank you. Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater on The Huddle. News Talk ZB, it's coming up 9 to 6.